Hi, everyone. Um, yes, today we are talking about accessibility. And um, I'm going to put here. Now everything should work perfectly. I think that we, as developers, we often make false promises to our users. And what I mean with that is that um, our user interfaces, they promise things that we don't actually implement in them. And they don't work the way that they are promising that they would work. And that's what I will be talking about today. But before um, going there, a couple of words about myself. So hi, I'm Eva Jonna Panula or Evis Panula. And um, I'm accessibility specialist and senior software developer. Currently, I'm working at Aura. So yes, the, like the ring company, if you can see, if you know our product, then like, just, if you don't, look it up. Um, I'm also certified professional in web accessibility. So that I, 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 I A, A, P, C, P, W, A thing on the slide means that, um, well, International Accessibility, no, International Association of Accessibility Professionals, I never get it right, and Certified Professional in Web Accessibility. So I basically maybe know something that what I'm talking about here. Uh, other than that, I write a blog, I speak while well, I'm here now, and I'm also a disabled person. And when I'm not doing something, well, even remotely related to working, I love to explore the Finnish nature. It's really awesome, by the way. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. And I usually either go by foot or I go by kayak. And that picture on the um, slide, it's taken last spring on Easter. We were kayaking in the Porkkala archipelago, which is in Kirkkonummi. And uh, there is a um, red kayak. Or, or the front of a red kayak. You can see uh, like a pretty still sea. There is one other person kayaking in, the, like, in, in front of there, uh, sun shining. There are some islets. It was like super peaceful and beautiful. I also recommend checking out Porkkala Archipelago with a kayak. That's awesome place. But yeah, uh, that's enough about me. Um, if you prefer follow along with the talk, you can find the, well, I'm not going to say you can find the slides because that's not actually a, like, a, the, these slides that you can see here, but uh, like a textual version of the slides you can find from evis.codes, so E-E-V-I-S dot C-O-D-E-S slash talks slash let's dash keep dash our dash promises. And one way why I'm sharing these uh, as a like, textual version is that uh, even though I know a bit about accessibility, I don't really know how to make uh, documents accessible. But if you ever need somebody doing that, I highly recommend Selco Dig Digital, so the company where Marianna works. So just like remember that. All right. I hope that it's been there for uh, like, enough of time. Today, we are going to talk about, well, first, a bit about accessibility. I'm going to say a couple of words. And then, uh, first, we are going to talk about ARIA, which is um, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And if you've never heard about it before, that's OK. I'm going to tell a bit more about it in the second section. And then the third section is going to be about keyboard navigation and styles. Let's talk about accessibility. And actually, I still have this one here. So Mariana gave a really good introduction on the topic, and, and like, I'm not going to go deep into that one. But I just want to say that when I'm talking about accessibility here, I'm, I'm talking about digital accessibility. Because like, I could be talking about physical world accessibility as well, but today it's about digital accessibility. And if I had to define what accessibility means, I would probably use something like 
anyone despite of disabilities or impairments can use a site or service or app, like the di digital product. And why it's important? Well, we are living in a world where everything is more and more digital every day. Let's think about banking services. For me, it's actually really easy to handle my banking things with uh, like mobile app and like I think I haven't been to a office like a real building bank building for years now but my aunt she's 70 she doesn't even own these like um, how it's called well she can't do anything in a like digital banks because she she don't have these these like accounts there and and because she just feels that everything is so hard to use. She doesn't actually even um, have a like smartphone, and it's been pretty like hard for her. But if the services were, and especially the bank she's using, if it was more like the app was more easy to use, or even the phones were more easy to use, then maybe she would be using these digital services. But right now, she can't because she feels that everything is just too hard. So yeah, that's why it's really important to um, think about accessibility, especially in the digital, um, well, digital world and digital apps and everything. So yeah. That's it, or that, that was all I wanted to say, like, as a, as a like, well, well, about accessibility. Then, um, ARIA. I already mentioned that ARIA comes from Accessible Rich Internet Applications, so it's an acronym for that, and it's a, like a collection of states, properties, attributes, and roles uh, that help with like help to uh, communicate a like dynamic content to assistive technology, such as screen readers. And you know, in the beginning, web was pretty much static. But <laughs> as we all know, today, everything is really, really dynamic. There are like some sites that are static, but everywhere is some JavaScript doing something and, and things are changing and everything. And um, assistive technology can't keep up with that without some sort of a like helper tool. So ARIA is that tool for that. And why am I talking about ARIA today? Or like, why I want to mention this in, to, in, in this talk? Well, there is actually like lots of misuse of ARIA in the internet, in the digital or well web apps and services. And that actually leads to more inaccessible products. And um, there is a document called Why ARIA Authoring Practices. And um, I want to quote one line from that. Um, I don't know if it's standard, but I'm going to speak about document. I don't remember what's the official name for it. No ARIA is better than bad ARIA. And um, ARIA was actually designed to add on top of semantics, not to use instead of them. So to use these semantic HTML elements and not like um, instead of these. And in that same document, there are, well, many principles or some principles, and I want to talk about two of them. Let's first talk about the principle number one, a role is a promise, and you might maybe now guess where the title of this talk comes from. So when we use ARIA role, so if you've ever set a role something to an HTML element to JSX code, that's actually ARIA role. And in this example, uh, I've said, like, it's really a bad example, never please don't write this code. But um, here is a roll of button set, and, and that would maybe like, suggest that this should be a button, and then there is also a class name that is button, so that maybe also suggests that this 
thing looks like a button. And um, it even has the, like the text, I'd like to be a button, because it's really not a button. And I can tell that the developer remembered to add a on-click handler, the, this particular element, so it works with, with a mouse. But this is like, it just promises that it's a button, but there is like, uh, not all of the things that uh, being a button requires are not implemented. So what it would require is to have a tab index to make it like actually um, focusable so that a keyboard user, which like screen reader users also use keyboard so that they can actually like focus to that element. And then, well, screen readers uh, utilize the on-click element, but like for keyboard users, there should be also these um, keyboard event listeners implemented. So that's also lacking from this one. You can't really see that because I didn't add the on, like, um, event handlers here, but just trust me, they are not implemented. So yeah. So role is a promise, and this one promises that it's a button, but it doesn't implement all the required um, like conditions for this element to be a button. So that's the idea of, of the role, uh, role is a promise. And by the way, if you ever see this kind of a like, piece of code, just please refactor it to use a semantic button element. That's the, like, the right way to do a button. I just took it as, a, as an example. And because like, <laughs> it's really often, or, well, I see really often that uh, buttons are implemented out of divs, and divs are not buttons. So yeah, um, then there is another principle that ARIA can both cloak and enhance, creating both power and danger. And what does this mean? Let's unpack it a bit. Uh, first of all, some of ARIA, it's like a cloak. It can cover or override the original either semantics or content. And this example on the screen, by the way, is not um, about this one. It comes a bit later, like I'm referring to this one right now. But um, one example of, of like this aria being like a clock, cloak uh, is that um, if you have, a, let's say, links that have only icons, and um, well, as Mariana mentioned, there always should be a visible label, but like the minimum thing to do would be to add a some sort of um, like text alternative to those icons. So let's say we have a like share to Instagram bot or link actually, or go to Instagram link, and there is only this icon. Uh, then like the minimum you could do, you could use Aria label with text Instagram uh, to make it more accessible, at least for screen reader or like those who browse the site through, well, screen readers, for example, you could use Aria label and that Instagram text there would override the kind of the content because, well, if there is just an icon, then it would be like without any text, that would be just an empty link actually. So that way you could add some text um, content there, though I really, recommend adding a visual label, like text label, so yeah. But then uh, with ARIA, there's also a danger because we can actually override things and, and make things more inaccessible that way. And now we come to the um, example here. So in the example, there is a section that has ARIA hidden, set to true, that's a like shorthand for that. And then inside the section, there is an H2 that says an important section. And then there is a paragraph saying important content. And then a button that says that it's, it's a button vital to business. So maybe you can already guess that there is like, th this section is important uh, for the business and, and like users should be seeing this. They should be getting to that one. But because of the aria hidden set to the section, this particular section is not exposed to assistive technology. 
it's completely hidden. Because ARIA hidden, when it's set to somewhere, uh, it's, it hides the, the element where it's set to, and also its children. So screen reader user wouldn't even know that there is this important section. So there is danger too. So how we can keep our promises when it comes to ARIA? First of all, if you can, use semantic HTML. That's like really the thing. Learn semantic HTML. There is more than just button and uh, anchor. There is lots of great um, elements to learn as well. So if you are using div somewhere, maybe think, what am I doing? Is there a semantic version for this element? And, and then use that semantic element. But unfortunately, everything can't be created through um, semantic element, so we need to sometimes create custom components. And when creating custom components, then ARIA comes handy, and, and like ARIA can help to communicate the like state changes and, and other things like that. Then you can use ARIA, but know what you're doing so that you're not ac accidentally making things more inaccessible. And there is this document, or actually I think today it's a site. It, it used to be more of a document, but now it's it's more usable site. That why ARIA authoring practices I mentioned. There's going to be a link at the end of this uh, talk, so <laughs> you don't uh, try to guess what's the like the name from what I'm saying. But like in that document or site, you can actually find the expected um, ARIA attributes, labels, and, and things like that. Uh, sorry, not labels, states, and, and other things for different components and widgets. Also for button and link and, and other similar pretty simple ones that have the, like, the semantic um, version. So you can check, check things from there as well. All right. I just want to say that when creating these custom components, remember also to add these keyboard event listeners because assistive technology users really need those. And this is also a good segue to the next well, section. Let's talk about keyboard navigation and also styles. I, for some reason, forgot to add that part to this slide. But I just want to remind you that not everybody uses a mouse when they are using a computer. And um, that's really like an important thing to remember because I think that we as developers, we tend to, if, if we are mouse users, we tend to build um, experiences that are good for mouse users because they are like us. So it's good to remember that not everybody is like, our us, uh, like us and, and like we are not our users. But when a person who is using either a keyboard or keyboard emulating device such as, well, uh, custom keyboards or, or like, uh, okay, I had a great list in my mind and now I'm blanking. So I'm not gonna continue, but like everybody who is uses either a keyboard or keyboard emulating device, they rely on that focus indicator. And um, you know that thing that's set like automatically or like by default set with outline, outline. And unfortunately, many designers and developers love to remove from the site. But like keyboard users are actually relying on that. And that's like if you hide the like focus indicator, it's like using a site when you are using a mouse without seeing the cursor. So that's really important thing to, thing to remember that's like never hide the focus indicator, uh, never set outline to none. Even if you are enhancing the focus indicator with and creating it for, from, for example, box shadow, uh, set the, like the outline color rather to, to transparent and not to none because uh, then Windows high contrast mode users can still navigate. Because like, if you set it to none, then Windows high contrast mode which will just completely hide the focus indicator. And um, when keyboard users or keyboard mimicking uh, device users are uh, 
uh, like navigating on a page, they basically use a tab to go through the like the um, interactive controls and like jumping from one interactive control to another, and then they can go back with shift and tab. And when they encounter a interactive control, they can activate it with different keys. So for example, for link, that would be enter. For button, that would be enter and space. For um, checkbox, it would be a space, uh, and so forth. And as mentioned, that why ARIA authoring practices I keep referring to lists these expected keyboard, um, like, well, lists expected keyboard behavior. So, a couple of things to remember, or a couple of examples about this. First of all, styles should match the underlying component. As Mariana, men Mariana mentioned about that headings should look like, the, like the, they should be semantically headings and they should look like headings. It's just like, this is basically the same idea. And um, in the example, I have an anchor, so a link that has a like ref to some URL, and then class name button, which again suggests that this link maybe looks like a button. And then, well, it says that I'm a link looking like a button, so maybe we can be sure that it looks like a button. And um, you know, when a user navigates, keyboard user navigates to this particular element and tries to activate it with an enter, well, everything's fine. Like, link and button both activate with enter. But if they focus to that particular element and then press space, the like, page just scrolls down. And that's really frustrating because like, it's a link, even though it looks like a button. And then like, they need to get back to the place they were and then try again. Maybe it was a bug, and then they press space again, and that's double frustrating. So styles should match the underlying component. So if it looks like a button, it should be a button. If it looks like a link, it should be a link, and so forth. And I can't stress this enough that remember to, um, Yes, remember to add keyboard event listeners for custom components. And um, in this example, it's the, basically the same as in the first example. So it's a div that has a role of button. This time it has tab index zero, so user can actually uh, focus to it. And then class name button, and it says that I'd like to be a button. Okay, if a screen reader user focuses to this one, they will hear that, okay, it's a button and um, I, I'd like to be a button and then they can actually activate it. But if the developer has added only the on-click event handler here, or, or keyboard event listener here, it means that when a keyboard only user, sighted keyboard only user, focus, focuses to this element and presses either enter or space, well, nothing happens because there is no like listeners, event listeners for those events. So it's well, it's expected behavior from the point of view of code, but not from the point of view of a of a user. So that's something that if you are ever building a custom component, remember to add event listeners for keyboard events for custom components. And again, please use semantic elements if, if you are building something like a button. So this is not a good example of a, like something that should be in the code. This is like, it's just easiest to show something with a, like a simple component. So that's why I chose this button here. All right. So just a reminder about how, to, how we can keep the promises we are giving with keyboard navigation. Style the component to look like the underlying component. And I just realized that there is something that I didn't say out loud, is that styles are also a promise. So when something looks like something like, well, let's say it looks like a button, it's a promise that there is a button and it should work as a button. So that's why it's important to remember this. And the other one was that 
please do remember at this um, keyboard event listeners for the custom components. So yes, thank you. My name is Evis Panula, and you can find me from Twitter. I'm Evis Panula, so E E V I S P A N U L A, and well, basically everything else you can find from my website, which is evis.code, so e e v i s dot c o d e s, and I'm just gonna leave this one here just for a second. So this is the the document I kept referring to. So why ARIA authoring practices? So thank you. I just want to say before you go that Evis is not even close to what I said. Well. I've like I've used to that Finnish names. They are so hard that like if if somebody from Finland or or like Finnish speaking asks me, then I'm like no 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 it's Evis. But if it's somebody who doesn't really speak Finnish, then I'm pretty much fine with Eva Anything. Evis, Eva Eve, Evis. I gave you a Dutch man name, so they <laughs> <laughs> now you know. <laughs>